Hello, my name is Lee Harris. I'm one of the developers of Objects in Space, and I'm going to talk you through a quick video walkthrough of Objects and give you a bit more of an idea of what the game's about. I am on the Largo gas port at the moment, which is a small space station in the LEO star system, and I'm going to take a quick contract and show you how the game goes. These monitors are all interactive. If I click on Commerce link here, you can see I've got a handful of options. I'm going to take a look at what contracts are available and see that one of them, going to Penitent Commercial in Leo, is not a terribly difficult journey and I'll get 180 credits out of it. I need to pick up 25 units of oxygen, I get to sell them for whatever they're worth when I get there, and I get the bonus. So I'll take the contract from this terminal and then head up to the trading terminal here where I can buy goods that are available. And on the right hand side are all the goods that this space station currently has. And this set of oxygen, which is 25 at zero credits, is there especially for the contract that I've just created, just uh, collected. So I will buy that oxygen and it appears in my cargo on the left hand side. Now I can get out of here. I will go to the airlock and click on the airlock here to move back to my ship. And here we are. So this is a Proxima-class starship, it's the heaviest freighter in the game. Up until now we've only shown different parts of the series starship, so this is quite new. This is the engine room. In here I can take a look at all the modules that I currently have on my ship, do repairs as needed. This is the comms room where I download and send different messages or check news from local star systems. This is the power room where I can configure which model, uh, modules get turned on or off when I enter stealth mode. And this is the bridge, where I can undock my ship and set about our journey. So these different monitors all have different functions. The bottom right hand one here is the navigation map, and I am that little blue circle in the middle of the screen. I can pan around the star system I'm in using the arrow keys. You can see there are other space stations around, asteroid belts, a star, that sort of thing. And I'm heading here to Penitent Commercial. I could just click on plot and then engage to set a direct course for there, but if I want to, I can also hold down shift and then click to set multiple waypoints for if I want to avoid, for instance, bumping into that moon. So I click engage, my ship rotates and starts firing in that direction. I can zoom in and out as well, and you can see my ship is away. So everything that you do in Objects in Space chews up power. When my ship rotated, it would have taken a little bit of power, and when it turned the main engines on to bring us up to speed, it would have taken a little more. So these two bars on the bottom right-hand corner here indicate your current power consumption or drain, and the amount you've got in total stored in your batteries. So I want to keep an eye on that, as well as knowing that every time I do turn or use my main engines, it's going to make me slightly more visible to potential enemies. You can see on the nav map here, I've just drifted into a small blue gas cloud, which is a dark nebula. The percentage of how dense it is appears down here. The denser it is, the more hidden I am from potential other ships. So it's a good idea to sort of hop between different clouds to try and keep yourself in good cover. And I can shut down my ship's systems as I move between the clouds to give me a bit more, of a a bit more cover as I'm out in open space. This little bar at the very top of the screen here tells me how noisy I'm currently being. If I wanted to drop into MCON mode, it would drop from four lit bars down to only two. So this is pretty good for a heavy freighter like this. But for as long as I'm in stealth mode, you can see in the bottom right hand corner here that I'm now draining power. And the right hand bar indicates that I'm slowly running out. And if I run out completely, that might cause problems for me doing general f ship functionality. So I'll come out of stealth mode for now, and you can see there's a little yellow arc that's appeared on the nav map. This question mark is a potential object. It could be an enemy ship, it could be some cargo adrift in space, some harmless debris, or a sensor ghost. A sensor ghost is like a small blip on the radar that gives you an idea that something could have been there and gave off something which uh, might have been an emission but might not have been. Up here on the sensor screen, it shows you what this object is emitting on a waveform down here. And all we can see at the moment is one tiny little spike. So that gives us a clue that it was probably nothing, or it was something that appeared so briefly as to not really matter. So around the rest of the ship, if I go into engineering, you can see that I can open up different modules 
like so, and you can get a look at the components that are inside them. You can unscrew any module that you want to and replace the parts with other ones, and in this way you can do spot repairs if things are broken. So this is a perfectly functional module, but if I take out one component, you can see it goes from working to absolutely not, and until I put that component back in, that module is currently broken. So I'll close it back up because I like having communications. It helps me communicate. Close the module, reconnect it, and my comms is online as you can see. So down here we've got the helm. If I wanted to, I could rotate the ship manually. The arrow there indicates which direction the ship is currently facing, but the smaller arrow indicates which direction I'm currently moving. So if I burn main engines, in the direction I'm currently facing, my ship will slowly but surely start to come around to being at that angle. I can also increase or decrease the amount of power being given to the main drive, which not only makes using it a little quieter, but also chews up less power. And from here I've also got my damage display, I can activate an SOS beacon if I get stuck or lost in space, and I can also activate my IFF, which is like my license and registration. It's the thing that I send out that gives away my position, but tells all the authority vessels nearby that I mean uh, no nefarious business. So I'll click engage again so that my ship goes back on course, let autopilot do its thing, and you'll notice all those little dots on the radar just went from being grey and in various positions to somewhere new. This is because I wasn't facing them. So as my ship isn't facing something, I lose track of where it is. That's indicated by them losing their color coordination and turning gray, and that's when those arcs appear that give you a rough indication of where they are, but not a completely accurate one. So these different ships, if I click on them, I can get more information. This is the Pembroke. It's a Kyushu-class ship, and it's an authority vessel, as denoted by both its shape and its color. An authority vessel will scan nearby merchants to make sure that they're not carrying any illegal goods, including myself. So if I go too close to an authority ship, it's entirely likely that they'll scan me, and if I happen to be carrying illegal narcotics or weapons or something like that, I could cop a massive fine. These other green dots are merchant ships. We've got the Nautica 7, a Leander-class freighter. We've got the Michael de Michel de Bont. And so these are sort of competitors for me. They're doing the same sort of job that I currently am. Now, if a pirate happened to appear nearby, it would first of all appear like a question mark like this one just did. But again, if I take a look up here on the sensor array, I can see it's just a blip. Whereas if I click on a merchant which is active, this is what an actual ship looks like. You can see that over here it's got IFF lit up and reactor lit up. Those two things indicate what those two spikes might mean. So a constantly in flux waveform that looks a lot more complicated like this is much more likely to be a ship. So I can ignore this little question mark, but had it been a pirate, I might have wanted to go into MCON mode to go into stealth, or I can continue on my way and just hope that I get to this space station before they reach me. So the merchants travel around according to different shipping lanes, and it's fairly safe to be somewhere near them. If you see a whole bunch of different merchants that are doing their thing, you can bet that if you stick nearby, you'll generally be okay. Authority vessels are also programmed to stay around where there are major shipping lanes, so you're likely to encounter less pirates if you watch for where things are populated. Now I'm almost here at Penitent Commercial. Once I'm there, I can sell my goods. And as the ship turns, again, you can see the use of my RCS system, which is a reaction control system for pivoting, drains a lot of the battery, and then it recharges as soon as I'm done. And you'll see it also is going to chew up a lot of battery when I come to a stop. So my ship is now facing away from the space station, and it'll use main engines to bring me to a complete stop. And here we are. The docking procedures commencing with penitent commercial, connecting to shore power, etc. So I'll navigate through these rooms of the ship to get back to the airlock. Now that I'm docked at Penitent Commercial, make my way through, and here we are. So much like when I was at Largo Gasport, I would go and find the commodities module uh, terminal, and I would sell the goods and complete the contract. Thank you very much for watching this brief video walkthrough of objects in space. We'll come back and do more of these if you like them, and we look forward to sharing the game with you on the 21st of June.